We're now going to look at an extremely powerful built-in collection type in Python. And that type is known as a list. A list is one of the sequence types in Python, which means that a list is a sequence of items. The difference is that unlike strings, where the items have to be characters, a list can be a sequence of items that are any kind of Python data object. So for example, if I wanted to create a list, we use the square bracket to denote the starting and ending point of a list, similar to how we use quotes for strings, and we comma delimit the items of a list, whereas with a string we don't put anything in between the characters of a string. If I wanted to create a list consisting of four integers, I might do something like 12, 45, 63, 20. Close bracket. That list of four integers is a valid Python list object. But because I can create a list that contains anything, I could create a list that contains the integer 12, the string cat, the boolean false, the floating point number 45.6, and perhaps another integer 23. That would be a five item collection, a list, and if we evaluate that list we can see that we get that list value back. Of course the empty list is going to simply be the square brackets with nothing inside much as we saw that an empty string is simply a quote, quote, with nothing inside. So, one of the things you'll notice now is that lists allow us much more flexibility than we have with primitive data and also that we have with strings in that we can clearly now group together all sorts of different kinds of data depending upon the problem that we want to solve. Now the next thing we want to consider is some basic operations. And the good news here is that we've seen these operations before if you've looked at the string data type. So let's create a list and let's give it a name. My list will be a reference to the list and let's just use the one from above. 12, the string cat, the boolean false, the floating point number 45.6 and the value 23. So now my list evaluates to the list that it refers to. Well, as we saw with strings, there are a number of things that sequences can do. One of those things is concatenation. And we use the same operator. We use the plus operator to concatenate two lists. So if I say I would like to concatenate my list with the list consisting of the three integers, four, five, six, the result is my list, which is the list 12, cat, false, 45.6, 23, joined together with now the list 4, 5, 6, and we can see that we begin with a list with five items, added a list of three items, and now we have a list of eight items. Notice that my list is still the original list. This does not change the list at all, but as with strings, when we concatenate two lists together, we get a new list. Similarly with strings, we can use the length function, which is called len, and I can ask for the length of my list, and it returns five. There are five items in that list. And of course, the length of a concatenation will be the length of the two lists added together as integers. We can also use the rep or repetition operator, the star, and I can say I would like my list to be repeated twice and that will take the items of the list and cause them to be concatenated with themselves or simply repeated into a single list so we can see that we have the original list 12 cat false 45.6 and 23 and then again 12 cat false 45.6 and 23 and notice this is all inside of one list and so if we take the length of the result of multiplying my list by 2, there are now 10 items in that list. And again, my list has not been modified because 
This is simply an operation that returns a new list. The other things that we can do with lists, similar to what we can do with strings, are we can ask whether an item is in the list. So we can ask whether 12 is in my list, and that's a boolean, it returns true. We can ask whether 15 is in my list, and that returns false. 15 is not an item in that list. I could ask if 15 not in my list, and that would return true, because it isn't there. The other thing that I can do that is fundamental with lists is to find items at particular positions, and we call that indexing and slicing. And so, just as before, remember that this list now consists of items that have positions. So if I draw this picture, 12 and the string cat and the value false and the floating point number 45.6 followed by the integer 23, as we would expect, these are ordered in sequence and the positions are going to be starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the index operator and the slice operator are going to work on those positions to be able to grab values out of that collection. And so, for example, if I ask my list indexed by 2, I'm going to get the value false because my list the second position is referring to the value false. And likewise, if I say my list indexed by 4, which is the last item of the list, I get the integer 23. If I say my list indexed by 5, I get an error because there is no item 5. Even though the length of the list is 5, there are only positions 0 through 4. And, of course, my list indexed by zero gives me access to the first item. Now, slicing works the same way. That is, my list sliced beginning at position one, going up to but not including position four, will give me those three items. Going to our picture, starting at position one, which is the item cat, going up to but not including position four, so stopping here, which would be at 45.6, so I get cat, false, and 45.6. And notice that in that case, I get a sub-list. The result here is in fact a list. You can see the square brackets. So when we take an index operation on a list, we get the item at that position. When we take a slice of a list, we get another list. We get a sub-list. And as you would expect, if I take the list, starting at position 3 and going up to but not including position 3. I'm taking a slice that really doesn't exist and the result is the empty string.